Interesting reading, don't you think? Sometimes this reading is called Jesus' Breakfast on the Beach. I like that title. But I think a better one would be Jesus doesn't give up on us. Even if it takes a miracle catch of fish, or breakfast on the beach, or three invitations to confession, Jesus continues to love us and to give us life. That's a major relief, at least to me. It's an incredible blessing. The Lord doesn't give up on us. In the three other Gospels, Jesus calls and commissions his followers at the very beginning of his life story. But here in this book of John, where the reading we just heard comes from, Jesus commissions his followers at the end of his life. He tells them the truth. That God redeems them for a purpose. And Jesus sends his followers out into the world to make a difference. Today's, in today's last reading, we hear another account of the parents of Jesus Christ following his resurrection. The account is, not, or is intended not only to prove Jesus' new life, but also his ongoing efforts to reconcile with his people and give them more chances to serve him. As you may remember in this Gospel of John, the disciple John is the only one, only male disciple to stand by Jesus through his crucifixion and into his death. All the other male disciples run away. Now today we hear that these same disciples failed to get any fish. They failed just like they failed trying to be faithful to Jesus. They failed until Jesus directs them to that amazing sheep on the right side of the boat. It's a miracle story. But it also points to past failure of the disciples. And it shows their need of Jesus at all times. The story continues that the disciples met and become so full of fish that they struggled to get it into the boat and they instead dry and drop into, onto the shore. Then Jesus invites those same guys to breakfast. He said, bring some of those fish you just caught. And he adds them to those fish and to the bread that Jesus provided. I think that's an extraordinary part of this sermon or this story. So let me say it again. Jesus not only provides for the disciples, but he also invites them to contribute what they have. Can't have breakfast unless they share. In that way, as those disciples join what they have to what Jesus provides, they're forgiven. They're drawn back into fellowship. They're reconciled with Jesus and with each other. Then in that scene with Peter, strange conversation of questions, repetitive questions. We find this reconciliation becomes even more extraordinary for it goes deeper. In that scene, Jesus asks Peter three times to confess his love, and three times Peter does. But by the third time, Peter is deeply sad and even hurt by those questions. This part, this part of, this, of the story pertains to that first gospel question on that yellow insert. So maybe you want to pull that out. That God renews us through his word insert. And let's look at that very first question. You might eye your conversation partner too to make sure you've got someone to talk to. The first question is, do you think Jesus asked Peter whether he loves him three times to embarrass people? Pay Peter to strengthen Peter's conviction or to assure Peter of Jesus' love and forgiveness. Why don't you take a second or two and talk about that with one another. See what you think. There's probably no right or wrong answer, just different degrees.
It seems to me that Peter thinks this questioning has to do with Jesus scolding or rebuking him. I think, that, I think that's what Peter thinks. After all, if you remember the last time Peter had gathered around the charcoal fire was when he was in the high priest's courtyard. And when he was asked if he knew who Jesus was, Peter denied his Lord three times. But I think Jesus' repetitive questions are meant to be an abuse, a rebuke, but an absolution. Forgiveness. Peter received three invitations to confess in order to wipe away those three denials he made just days earlier. In and through this questioning and confession, Peter is restored, restored to himself, to his Lord, to his friends, to his community. In other words, Jesus forgives Peter. Let's look at that next question on the yellow insert. What effect do you think it has on Peter to hear Jesus tell him three times to feed my sheep? Please discuss that with each other. What do you think it is? Certainly it was disturbing, don't you think? But Peter must be relieved that he's friends again with Jesus. There's more going on, though. Just as before, Jesus doesn't merely provide something. Jesus also invites Peter to do something. Jesus invites Peter to help with the Lord's ministry, the ministry that Jesus started. That's what Jesus is doing when he tells Peter to feed my sheep. Peter isn't merely forgiven and drawn back into fellowship, but he's given something meaningful to do with his life. It's meaningful work. Given a purpose bigger than any he could have developed for himself. A few years ago, there was an, incident, an institute who conducted what they called happiness research. The researchers went, and went out to the, around the globe to find out what makes people happy. It's a good question. What makes you happy? Think about that. And then I'll tell you what they, they found out. They want to find out what some countries do to make them happier than others. What factors contribute to longer life and a greater sense of fulfillment? Though the researchers discovered several things contribute to happiness, wealth, health, a sense of security certainly do. But they said that there were really two main things that are absolutely essential to feel happy. Can you guess what they are? Got it in mind? Anyone, can anyone guess? To be loved. To be loved. That's lovely. To be loved? Yes, Lynn. Family and faith? You might have read that sermon. No. <laughs> Pretty close. I think those are all three really close. But they said it in a different way. They said, what's essential to feel happy is number one, a sense of belonging to some sort of community. Family, faith, faith life. And to that, to do that, you must love one another, right? Have a sense of belonging to a community. And number two, the belief that what you do matters. That what you do is not just a frivolous thing, but what you do matters. And think about that. <clears throat> to me, those are very important. What? There's belonging to a community and the belief that what you do matters. Belonging and purpose are the two key ingredients to happiness, according to that institute. And if you think about it, that's exactly what our Lord provides us. He provides us a family of faith, we love one another. And he provides a ministry of service. But then he also adds forgiveness. Thank goodness. That he adds forgiveness to the mix. For when we mess up, he gives us other chances. While we have breath, the Lord doesn't give up on us. And it's right here in this place where today's story of Jesus that strange story of Jesus' breakfast on the beach connects with you and me and our lives every day. 
Certainly we were commissioned at our baptism to share in the work and ministry of Jesus Christ, but we fall short. We fail to witness and word or deed to our faith in our living Lord all the time. Jesus doesn't give up on us. He doesn't just give us a commission. He also forgives us when we mess up. Jesus doesn't just forgive us. He also calls us to try again. Jesus doesn't just call us to try again. But he invites us to share what we have as we are given meaningful work to do. Do you understand? Every part of our daily lives are potential places to add what we have to the abundance that our Lord already provides us. And so that together, like Peter, we may feed Jesus' sheep as we serve God and others. It is true that most of us have a hard time connecting what we do on Monday through Saturday with what we do here at worship on Sunday. So please listen. What you do every day matters. What you do every day matters. That's deeply touching to me. As parents or friends, as employees or volunteers, as co-workers or students or neighbors or bosses, you're called to look for ways to care for the people and the world that God loves so much. And I see you do it. You transport others to doctor appointments. You comfort those who grieve. You tend to the needs of those who suffer. You do this all the time. I've watched you do it. But to be truthful, you and I don't do it perfectly. Or as often as we should, I certainly don't. But then as human beings, you and I will always fall short. We'll have to compromise. We won't always follow through and we'll disappoint and even fall away. Which is why we need to hear today's Bible story about Jesus' beat, of breakfast on the beach. We need to hear that Jesus does not give up on us. Rather, after each failure, he invites us to try again. He encourages us, provides nourishment. That's what we're doing here right now. Receiving encouragement and nourishment that we need. Then the Lord calls us to add what we have. Our time, our talents, our resources. So that when we leave this place, we can do that meaningful work we're called to do. In other words, let me say it again, what you do every day as followers of Jesus matters. You see, God lavishes on us grace and meaning and purpose in equal measures. Thanks be to God. Amen.